the Word of the Lord. Our first reading for this Sunday is taken from the prophet Isaiah. It is the solemnity of the epiphany of the Lord, the manifestation of the glory of God in Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. The first reading begins with a contrast. Imagine the city Jerusalem on a hill, and it is bathed in light, the light which does not come from itself. According to the first reading, the light that covers Jerusalem is the glory of God. It is divine light. Jerusalem does not possess its own light. Whatever light it has comes from God. And this light is in contrast with the darkness that envelops the other parts of the world. Through this light of God, shining through Jerusalem, the other nations are not totally in darkness now. They can see light. But if you are in darkness and you see a speck of light, your attention is diverted to it. You become curious. This will happen also to the nations. Seeing the light emanating from the city Jerusalem, they will go to Jerusalem. They will go towards the light. They will process towards that light. I think this is partly human instinct, but this is also quite spiritual and even missionary, according to the vision of Isaiah. Isaiah is reminding Jerusalem that the light that it enjoys from God is not for its own consumption. It is not to make Jerusalem proud. It is not for Jerusalem to say, Oh, I pity you other cities and other nations. You are still in the darkness. We already possess light. No, that is not the purpose why God allows His light to be in Jerusalem and to radiate through Jerusalem. The presence of God's light in Jerusalem defines the very mission of Jerusalem. Through that light, other nations will be guided to God, will be guided to the word of God that is proclaimed from the holy city. So, the first reading ends with this beautiful vision. Nations, kings, even kings, will troop to Jerusalem and hopefully will discover God there. And so the reading ends with acts of homage, acts of adoration, being rendered by people who do not belong strictly to the chosen people of God, of Jewish descent but they are attracted to the light of God, thanks also to Jerusalem that embodies the light of God. My dear brothers and sisters, the feast of today points not only to a city, but to a person, Jesus Christ. He is the light, and we are invited to troop, to move towards Him. And so this Sunday's reflection is about our journey towards Christ, how about you, my dear brothers and sisters? If you are asked the question, how did you discover the light of God in Jesus Christ? Or, have you seen the light of God in Jesus Christ? And if you have, how are you moving towards Him? How has your journey towards the light of Christ been? Or, have you even started? making that journey? Remember that light is for all to see so that seeing that light, all people would walk towards the light. Let us not ignore the light that the Lord sends us through Jesus primarily and through events, persons, and places. The important thing is let us walk 
towards Jesus. The Word of the Lord Our second reading on this Epiphany Sunday is taken from the letter of Paul to the Ephesians. We have been reflecting on our journey towards Jesus, our journey towards the light that God sends. In the first reading, the light of God is to be found in the city Jerusalem. And people walking in darkness, even kings, even those who do not belong to the chosen people of Jewish descent, seeing that light, they will walk towards Jerusalem and render homage to God. In the second reading, it is not anymore the city Jerusalem, but the very person of Jesus. The very person of Jesus is the mystery that God reveals to us. The secret plan of God that used to be hidden now is revealed by the power of the Holy Spirit to the apostles and to the prophets. St. Paul claims that due to God's grace and due to God's mysterious calling, he also, huh? he also was privileged to have seen that revelation. God has opened his eyes and God has manifested to him the plan of salvation in Jesus Christ. My dear brothers and sisters, St. Paul could be you, could be me. Maybe the difference is St. Paul had a, a rather strong experience that really opened his eyes. It was a dramatic experience that made him see the light of God in Jesus. God not present only in the law, but present in the person of the Savior. And we know his journey. He even considered his previous gains as a zealous Pharisee as useless compared to the light of Christ. So his priorities, his value system, all of this changed the moment he started walking towards the light of Christ. Like St. Paul, we should be ready also to make those adjustments in our lives if we are serious about our journey, pilgrimage towards Jesus. St. Paul also reveals that the light of Christ the light of Christ is truly for all. It is not meant only for the Jews, but also for the Gentiles. St. Paul is not original in this. We already saw this in the first reading. The light of Christ is for all. And St. Paul claims that this vision of Isaiah, where people of different nations come together to Jerusalem, now happens in the church, which is the body of Christ. And so people of different nations, different tongues, different traditions, different economic backgrounds, people who are educated and non-educated, oh, we all come together and become one family in Christ. This is another fruit of the epiphany of Christ. When the light of Christ shines and people agree freely to walk towards that light, we become one family. This Sunday, when you celebrate the Eucharist, look around you. Not all of the people in the church are related to you by blood. I'm sure not all of them attended the same school. 
uh, that you went to. I'm sure the people there in church come from different economic standings. Some are rather poor. Some would certainly be in the middle class. Some would probably, a few of them would be up there, you know. But what makes us come together? What makes us a family? What makes us one body? Jesus Christ, the light of Christ. So you see, when we lift our eyes and together journey to the light of Christ, a new humanity a new family is born. Of the Lord Our Gospel on this Epiphany Sunday is taken from Matthew. We have been reflecting on our journey towards Jesus, who is the light, our journey. In the first reading from Isaiah, the city Jerusalem is presented as the bearer of God's light. And for people who were enveloped in darkness, the light of God in Jerusalem is an attraction. And everyone will go to that city and hopefully will discover God, will adore God and give homage to God. Jerusalem, the bearer of light, has a mission to gather the peoples. And we hope that the people will make that journey towards the light. In the second reading, St. Paul, writing to the Ephesians, expresses his own experience. The light is not anymore found in a city, but in the revelation of God in Jesus Christ. He himself had to make that journey to accept Christ. And having received Christ, he also realized that Christ is the light of God, the saving light of God, not only for the chosen people of Jewish descent, but also to the Gentiles. So people of every nation seeing the light of Christ will now come together in the body of Christ, the church. The church becomes the new Jerusalem where people will worship God and people will become one new family coming from different races, coming from different economic, political, and educational backgrounds. But what holds them in common and together is the light of Jesus Christ. The Gospel narrates to us the search of the astrologers for the newborn king of the Jews. Again, we find in this episode from St. Matthew different ways of responding to the light of Christ and also Therefore, different ways of making the journey towards Christ. The astrologers, they come from the East. So they represent what we call the Gentiles or the pagan people. They do not belong to the chosen people of Israel. But they knew how to read the stars. And in the East at that time, they had a firm belief that the movements of the stars are related to events here on earth. They discovered this special star, which for them meant that the new king of the Jews was already born. So you could see that some of the traditions of the Jews had already spread. Even in the East, people must have heard that the Jews of old prophesied the coming of a new king. These astrologers, not believers, huh? they're not believers, just reading the stars and knowing a bit of the Jewish uh, expectation of a king, concluded, ah, wow, this light is an indication 
that the new king had already been born. Seeing that light, they pursued it. They pursued the search. They traveled. And at that time, travel was not convenient. But they had to see this newborn king. They had to be present and to witness this earth-shaking event for the Jews. A new king is born. But since they did not know Israel, no, they went to Jerusalem. They even did not know probably that Isaiah already said in the first reading that Jerusalem is the bearer of the light. They chose the right place to go, Jerusalem. Now, you have another set of people. Those who knew the scriptures, those who knew the Pharisees, the, the prophecies, I mean, the scribes, the Pharisees, they were consulted by Herod. And they were able to identify the place, Bethlehem. But, you see, they knew Bethlehem would be the birthplace of the newborn king. But they did not care. They did not get excited. They did not start their own pilgrimage to Jerusalem to check whether the newborn king is really there. They did not care. This is indifference. The astrologers acted. They took the journey earnestly to look for the newborn king. The, uh, the scribes, the experts in scriptures, unfortunately, they were indifferent to the fact. They did not do anything. They did not even start the journey in search of the king. Then the third is Herod. The news about this new king disturbed him and even the rest of Jerusalem. His position now is threatened. So he starts plotting against the king. This is another response. Hostility. Not just indifference, but hostility. And we will know later on that he would order the assassination, the killing of all boys two years and below in Bethlehem and the, its environs. My dear brothers and sisters, I think it is good for us to check how are we in our search for Jesus? Are we like the astrologers who will be determined and committed to our following of Christ? It, the, it may take a uh, Long this process, we would probably encounter a lot of bumpiness along the way. We would encounter a lot of problems. But are we determined to journey so that we could be in union with Christ? Or do we experience moments of indifference? We do not care. I don't care. There are many other lights there not just the light of Christ. Well, if I like Him, I will search for Him. But if I find other lights, well, okay. It doesn't matter to me. Are we like that? The whatever, whoever type of people? Or are we like Herod, hostile to Christ? Really being contrary to whatever He teaches, to whatever He shows us. Today, we celebrate Jesus' revelation, manifestation to all the world. Our role is to make the journey towards Him. Have you started the journey? Are you ready for that long journey? How has your journey been so far? How do you handle the trials, 
the difficulties that you find along the way? And how do you also celebrate the graces and the blessings that that journey towards Christ also offers you along the way? <music>